Well, we are in this session, we will be discussing the, the future uh, of science in terms of funding, of uh, institutional diversity and of strategic goals. And we have here uh, a very uh, important and knowledgeable panel uh, uh, from Portugal, from Egypt, and from the JRC, the Joint Research Center. Uh, we had already the opportunity of hearing, um, of hearing, uh, hearing your presentation in the morning about the, the GRC, but now I am going to ask you your opinion about uh, some other uh, things. Um, and I will, we, if you agree, we will just, uh, I have nothing to say. All, everything I said, I said it this morning. Uh, of course, I will comment on the interactions with my colleagues here in the panel, whom I thank very much for being here. Uh, and uh, I, will, I will do a first round uh, of questions to everyone, um, then a second one. And of course, I hope that we will have the possibilities, if time allows, to have one or two or three questions from the, from the public. Well... The people here on this, uh, on this panel are people who are uh, familiar with, uh, with the science system, with the funding of the science system, and with the strategic thinking about, about it at various levels. So my, my first question, and I will start here from my, from my right, is that from your perspective, uh, and your vision from Egypt. Uh, first, you will, in one minute, present yourself, please. Uh, but from your perspective, uh, and taking, taking into account the present situation, how you describe the science system and the role of funding from your perspective? And I will ask the same question to all of you. So your perspe perspective of the present situation of science funding in your uh, uh, funding and system in your in your case so please thank you very much uh, actually i'm very happy to be here today and i would like to thank you for the kind invitation uh, I, my name is wala uh, sheta i am uh, the uh, president of science technology and innovation funding authority in egypt it's almost doing the same thing that fct do in portugal uh, we are a young organization, we started in 2008, and we were part of the STI uh, reform in Egypt in 2019, and there were a uh, special law uh, issued for STDF to facilitate the funding of the research projects, the international collaboration, and to provide facilities uh, the themes and communicate with uh, people, uh, allow them to make a network together, working. W we are working with almost about uh, more than 30 countries using uh, bilateral agreement. And we are part of European Commission uh, Prima program. So with many international organization, uh, USAID, NSF, so we are, uh, we have a, 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 a we have a international uh, collaboration with many countries and hopefully with FCT in the coming few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, as you see, the funding, the national funding agencies are uh, working in similar ways uh, in the different countries. Uh, so now I ask uh, uh, David, uh, from your perspective. So an outside perspective, yes, you. Uh, how uh, do you do you think? How important is the funding in the uh, for for science development? You know, uh, and you have shown us in the morning how, uh, how well you know the Portuguese uh, system. So, seen from uh, uh, from the this perspective of the JRC, what how important is the funding, uh, both public, both and private to the development of science. Thank you very much. 
Uh, as I said this morning, I'm not from the research funding part of the commission, so I don't have any money to give out. And also, it's not perhaps my area of expertise, so I'm going to be more questions than answers here. Mm -hmm. So the, the questions and challenges we see uh, is um, how can the science funding system in many member states um, be improved to encourage, I think, three things that we look for. The first thing is interdisciplinary work, which at the moment looks challenging. Uh, it looks like something that everyone thinks is important. Certainly, if science is to be useful for policy making, it is indispensable, as we saw in COVID. We needed natural scientists and epidemiologists and virologists to work with behavioral scientists and other experts. Um, second, question I always have when faced with science funding is where are the rewards and incentives for scientists who want to devote some of their work to achieving policy impact? Is this sufficiently recognized within the science funding system so that projects which have a clear pathway towards impact will be given the time and resources to spend on achieving uh, the impact? That I think is uh, is absolutely crucial. And last but not least, um, we think it's important not only for the sake of the research itself, but for impact, that there is the possibility uh, for scientists to discuss their work and the choice of research questions with citizens, which does also take time and money. So is the scientific funding mechanism recognizing and rewarding scientists who take the time and trouble to consult with citizens uh, about their research questions. Um, clearly, there are some good things going on in the European Union, of which the missions is perhaps the preeminent example of a funding scheme which is trying to look more deeply at societal impact and includes within that policy impact, but also has been uh, interesting we have done a lot of work supporting our colleagues in research to bring citizens into the process of defining the missions. So I think uh, that offers something of a glimpse of the future and some initial answers to the questions that I pose about any funding mechanism. Yeah, thank you. You, you tackled two, two very important aspects. One, of course, is interdisciplinarity or multidisciplinarity. We, we always say that it is needed, that we should develop it, uh, enforce it, and in some, in some way we are not achieving it. And people feel a bit um, distressed when trying to apply, to apply uh, multiple uh, scientific areas within one instrument, for instance. Uh, that's true, so we have a lot of work to do on, on that. And, and uh, you also referred, and this is extremely important, so the participation of the society and the, the various stakeholders, but also the society in general. Uh, and this is also uh, um, an issue that we are maybe not tackling uh, so well, namely the funding agencies, at least, at least the Portuguese funding agencies. So what is the opinion, João Rocha, uh, João Rocha is a, a university professor and he is now the coordinator of the Council of the Associate Laboratories, one, one piece, uh, one entity uh, or group of entities that are within our uh, science system and we, that were created to be a, 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 a structured partner dealing with uh, uh, contribution in public policies in science and technology. So what is, uh, João, what is your view on, on these aspects? Well, uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for the invitation. Well, science in Portugal has seen an incredible growth in the last 20 years or so. We are now competitive in many areas with our colleagues in Europe and the rest of the world. But the sustainability of the system is, of course, very much dependent on funding. And we are spending now three times less per citizen than the average of uh, European Union countries. Um, 
and it's really a, a problem in many areas. Uh, we have problems with consolidation of uh, scientific careers. We have a large number of researchers who will finish their, their contracts uh, in two or three years' time, and no one knows what's going to happen, and that requires money. We have also uh, infrastructure, labs, um, equipment, and so on, uh, which have become, um, of course, uh, not as competitive and perhaps uh, in not very good shape because there aren't programs uh, in Portugal. Well, there are few programs to, to, to buy equipment and so on. Um, there's also, there are also problems with um, uh, projects. Su success rate of projects in Portugal is half the success rate of ERC, more or less off to search. Uh, so altogether, uh, I, don't, I don't want to uh, just enumerate all sorts of uh, uh, problems, but really there is a funding issue which needs to be addressed. Uh, Portugal spends, the government, Portuguese government spends about 0.8% uh, or something like that of, of, of uh, GDP per year, and the rest is, uh, to 1.6 is, is uh, the private sector. and. Um, this is really an issue. So we're quite uh, hoping that uh, with this uh, new program uh, of resilience and just money coming from Europe to help Portuguese situation, that uh, this can perhaps help boosting science in the country. But I would not like just to, to restrict myself to money. But there is a money issue. We have to say it clearly. Uh, I think there, there are a lot of things that can be done with the same amount of money. And that means uh, we can define better our priorities. We can have a st a st strategies to implement these uh, priorities. We should have robust evaluation of everything. We have evaluation of research institutions, which, by the way, are also in need of uh, uh, an addition of money. Um, but with improvement, and, and in fact, we need also to spend a little bit more with the with FCT because I think FCT uh, spends with itself very little amount of money, and that means that a number of uh, problems arise with organization. So I would, myself, at least, I would be prepared to spend a little bit more money on FCT, on the institution of funds, science in Portugal, um, in order to uh, perhaps uh, allow um, all the people working there to provide a, perhaps a better service, because they, at this point they are understaffed. Uh, in my view. So I think I would stop now at this mm -hmm. first round. Oh, okay, so you, you put, you put uh, uh, quite uh, uh, an importance on the question of funding, so yeah. of money, as you said. Yeah. Uh, and of course it is important, it is important. But uh, let me ask you, 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 told, you told that one should uh, better uh, design the priorities, the strategic priorities of the funding. The funding is as it is, it depends, the state funding depends on our Minister of Finances, on our state budget. Yep. Uh, so, for instance, for science, it is what it is. Uh, so, nowadays, uh, we have FCT uh, as spent all euros that were given to FCT from the state budget. We spent everything. So there is no uh, unsuccess rate of applying the funding and we spent everything and we could, of course, give away more if they would allow us to have more. Uh, we have uh, uh, our, our, our accounts are public and you, of course, know with your responsibilities, you know that we have more or less 20% of our funding goes, it's more or less approximate, 20% of our funding goes to research to contracts of researchers. About 20% goes to PhD scholarships. 20% goes to the funding of um, projects. 20% uh, go to the base funding of uh, institutions. And the rest goes to the international cooperation and these cross-sectoral uh, things. So, where to cut? Um, I'm not sure that we should cut 
That's what, what I'm not saying we should cut. What I'm saying is that Portugal spends, the government, Portuguese government, three times less per citizen than the average of European Union. And in fact, it has decreased the amount of funding uh, since uh, 2010 or so. While, for example, Greece has increased. So it's not just a problem of, of financial sorry, crisis. Decreased, uh, sorry, Joao, I didn't understand. Decreased what? Greece has Greece. increased, for example. Okay? So I'm not saying we should, we should cut. We, this is the, the, the money we have, and I don't think that overall the, 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 the different pots of money are, are, are incorrect. We need to, to finance all, all this. But we cannot have projects with an 8% or something success rate, because that's almost like throwing a projects in the air and see what falls on the table. Uh, um, I coordinate panels at European Research Council, and I, you know, I know below 20%, 15%, this is just very difficult to, to, to assess. We, of course, also need, if we want to have careers for our scientists, we need to have strong institutions. And to have strong institutions, there must be, and there is, but there must be enough basal amount of money to sponsor labs, to sponsor uh, um, equipment, and so on. So I, I'm not saying that we need to distribute in a different way. I, I agree that there should be a discussion on this issue. And uh, the Council of Associated Laboratories is now forming work groups to mm -hmm. discuss, among other things, this type of, 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 of issues. But I'm, I'm certainly saying that, because the question initially was on funding, yeah. that's why I mentioned, I have little doubts that if we want to be sustainable and if we want to, 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 you know, to, to, to do a sort of a quantum leap forward, we really need to invest more in science. And this is why I mentioned European uh, average and that we are so much below yeah. European average. I'm not claiming to be above European average. I'm just claiming not to be three times below European average. Yes, we have the goal, as Europe has, uh, we have the goal of attaining by 2030, of attaining on average 3% uh, of the GDP to, uh, to, to, to research. So that's, we, we go along with, with Europe in that, in, in that aspect. Also knowing, uh, and it has been stated by, by our government, that most of this increase, which is a, a very extraordinary increase, a very ambitious increase, this increase should come primarily from the private sector. Uh, so this is really a challenge for the private sector, but also for the research uh, units uh, that have to maybe work more in closer way with the private sector. So let, uh, let now hear the view of another type of, uh, of organization, uh, our Academy of Sciences. José Luis Cardoso, please. What are your yes. views on this? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, when, when, uh, good afternoon, and thank you very much for the invitation to be part of this panel. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a double hat. I'm a research <laughs> professor at the Institute of Social Sciences, University of Lisbon, and also, uh, for the moment, the president of the Lisbon Academy of Sciences. When, when I saw the, the, the topic of this uh, round table, I saw that there were many things to be discussed. Uh, future future <laughs> yeah. science, uh, you institutional, prepared well. <laughs> institutional diversity, funding and societal goals. And maybe funding is the, the, the issue for which uh, I'm less prepared to discuss. But since you put the mm -hmm. question, uh, I, I'll, be, I'll begin with it because I believe that, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I would like in a, in, a, in a second round of questions, I would like very much to explore the role of learned societies and academies for uh, uh, um, the design of uh, uh, science policies and especially the design of policy uh, of science uh, for policy and how they, the, the role that they, they, they should play in order to enable uh, uh, policy decision makers uh, to make decisions based on uh, uh, science. Uh, and this is the, the role that I believe that academies mm -hmm. and learned societies should play in a much more effective way. But as regards funding, I believe there are two main topics I would like to address. One is uh, the need of uh, a better coordination between between national funding programs and European funding programs. And especially in our case in Portugal, you, Elena, were saying that there is this wonderful and optimistic blueprint of uh, appointing 
to, uh, in, in 2030 to have 3% of GDP in research and development. Of course, this is a, a target which we should uh, welcome, but uh, uh, you need clear uh, a, a program and you need the right incentives in order to meet that, that target in 2030. And my point is that in, in, in countries like Portugal, uh, I believe that uh, the gap uh, between uh, 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 countries like Portugal, which belongs to a kind of a widening countries, not belonging to the top performance country, there is a lot that should be done. Mm -hmm. And this, 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 this means that there is a risk of divergence and of lagging behind if the correct instruments and incentives are not in place. And in my view, uh, uh, when you look at uh, the conditions in which most of our research units work, we see that uh, uh, resources are scarce in terms of the adaptation of the administrative uh, uh, systems and the, the administrative burden is quite uh, heavy in terms of the process that are required in order to meet uh, the, 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 the requisites for uh, applying to uh, most of uh, uh, European uh, funding uh, programs. And this is a barrier in Portugal, uh, I, I must say, and this, must, it, this explains the, uh, the, the reason why in most of European programs the, the, the rate of uh, participation of Portuguese uh, uh, R&D units is uh, uh, not uh, uh, so high as it, it, it should be, uh, provided that the conditions would be met. So, this is one of the, the main issues that I think we should discuss in Portugal is, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, the real difference that, exist, that exists and how the national funding system should be prepared in order to not only to put money in the research units but to create conditions for the research units to meet uh, uh, also the targets that are met by uh, other research uh, units in uh, different mm -hmm. countries. So this is one of the problems. Another problem which uh, en passant someone referred here at the beginning is the fact that sometimes we look at funding in terms of uh, the expected impact of research. And we are, when we are talking about the expected impact of research, it's uh, not, not only the social and economic and technological impact, but we should also uh, think about the, the impact in terms of uh, 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 fundamental science development. <laughs> and uh, uh, I believe that uh, uh, it would be a, a wrong principle to base funding only on the expected impact. And if we do not measure the expected impact also in a, a clear uh, um, uh, um, uh, development of science, fundamental science, and uh, uh, curiosity-driven science and not only science uh, with an impact in terms of uh, uh, economic and technological development. Mm -hmm. So this would be my, uh, uh, my answer to your questions in terms of both the, the need of a better discussion of the coordination between national uh, funded programs and European uh, funded programs and how can we get there uh, if we have not, uh, if our resources are not enoughly prepared to do so. And the other point is that funding should not be a, a kind of uh, um, uh, a a, an outcome of uh, 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 an initial proof of an impact that is measured in a way that sometimes uh, is, not, is not paying justice to scientific development, but to mm -hmm. applied development, applied science, and not to fundamental science. And this is particularly true in the area of the social sciences and humanities. Sometimes you can, uh, uh, it is very hard and very difficult to measure the impact uh, in terms of, uh, if you take uh, uh, into attention the, this I immense realm of, the, of uh, um, uh, knowledge creation in social sciences and humanities and where uh, the, the measure of impact may uh, uh, originate a process of uh, uh, devaluation of the role that this area of knowledge have in building future science. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are totally right that uh, in, two, in two, the, two of the aspects you referred. First is that we need uh, all types and all levels of, uh, of science, so fundamental science and applied uh, science we need all the TRLs uh, across, across uh, the science, certainly. Uh, 
a system will be a poor system if you only focus on, on targeted science on, on very applied matters because they are short-lived. Um, uh, the, other, um, the other aspect is that um, you need not only this, uh, this fundamental research, but that we need also uh, different areas of, of research. That, for instance, that you focused on, on social, uh, social sciences and, and humanities, uh, uh, increasing a little more what, what he said, and the difficulty of measuring, of assessing, um, assessing is better than measuring, assessing the impact of what uh, we have uh, uh, done in science. How, how to assess it? Uh, of course, in some, in some uh, way, in some uh, projects, this would be easy. If you are developing a product or an equipment or something like that, it is easy to, to, to assess if it is successful or not. But in many other aspects, it is not so easy. So the, the question of assessing impact is really a, a, a corner, a, at the center point of, of our system. Uh, let me now uh, go to, to Angela. Angela, it comes from, uh, from the higher education uh, system, from the polytechnics. Um, and polytechnics have done uh, uh, an incredible uh, work during the last years of uh, developing not only the component of, of um, education, uh, but also the developing um, research and putting uh, within that system, putting research centers that have been evaluated uh, and some of them are with excellent, excellent uh, grades. So how do you feel from your uh, from your sector, so the, the polytechnic uh, uh, sector, how do, do you see the development uh, of science? Angela will speak in Portuguese, no problem with that. Thank you. I think it's okay. I think, yeah. so thank you for the invitation. I speak in Portuguese. Para, para os politécnicos e o ensino superior em Portugal é um ensino binário, sendo um ensino superior binário, temos esta, efetivamente esta vertente, uh, e, e os politécnicos têm uma vertente muito de ciência aplicada, não é? E, portanto, sendo uma área fundamental, é uma área muito ligada à região, ao desenvolvimento, e hoje a região não é o local, não é, o, não é só o regional local, e, portanto, os politécnicos têm vindo a desenvolver uma área muito grande ao nível daquilo que é a investigação. Nos últimos anos, a Helena referiu isso, temos nos afirmado pela, pela investigação e pela constituição de centros que têm vindo a ter resultados de excelência, sempre muito ligados àquilo que é o desenvolvimento inter uh, e multi, multi, multidisciplinar. Portanto, são centros que, efetivamente, ao nível do desenvolvimento e da, da investigação, aquilo que nós necessitamos é de uma multidisciplinaridade e temos vindo a desenvolver em diferentes áreas, dentro, desde a área da, da, da sociologia, dentro das áreas das ciências sociais, muito virado também para a ciência cidadã, mas muito ligada também a tudo o que é o desenvolvimento sustentável do país e, do, e da Europa e do mundo. Portanto, temos vindo aqui a desenvolver diferentes esforços e aquilo que o Politécnico e que o Ensino Superior no seu todo, não apenas o Ensino Superior Politécnico, até porque o Ensino Superior Politécnico em muitas áreas também está interligado com o ensino universitário e, portanto, é nessa convergência e nessas sinergias que temos vindo aqui a desenvolver aquilo que é o nosso, o nosso know-how. Portanto, respondendo aquilo que entendo que é o desenvolvimento da ciência e da ciência muito ligada à ciência cidadã, à ciência para a resposta a uma necessidade local, barra regional, barra uh, mundial, tem vindo a ser desenvolvido com os nossos investigadores, com tudo aquilo que é a articulação com projetos multidisciplinares e interdisciplinares. Penso que é por aí que vamos conseguindo uh, afirmar a nossa, a nossa investigação a nível do país. Sabe que eu na, uh, venho de uma, da, da sessão anterior a esta, Uh, era uma sessão dedicada à colaboração entre a FCT uh, e a, a Fundação La Caixa, uh, que se dedica a promover, entre outras coisas, a promover projetos no âmbito de um, de um programa chamado Promove, 
que têm a ver com o desenvolvimento de regiões mais, mais periféricas, regiões do interior, uh, e procurando desenvolver as capacidades desses territórios, os recursos desses territórios, a qualificação das pessoas, sempre muito centrado nas pessoas e nos recursos. E o que se verifica nesses, nesses projetos e nas candidaturas a projetos e nos projetos ganhadores, ganhadores é que a intervenção dos institutos politécnicos é muito grande. De facto, eles estão mais próximos da realidade do território? Eu não sei se estão mais próximos da realidade. É efetivamente aquilo que nos caracteriza. É, é uma vertente muito importante do, do, do ensino superior politécnico e é esta ligação à região. Eu não sei se podemos dizer que eles estão, mais, eles estão efetivamente muito próximos. E, e a, a, os nossos stakeholders, os stakeholders uhum. do, do ensino superior, têm que ser cada vez mais os stakeholders da região e aquilo que nos aproxima e que nos faz desenvolver e que nos faz olhar para o futuro. Há, há pouquinho falava-se aqui da ciência cidadã, que é fundamental. E, portanto, a ciência cidadã tem, tem que estar a todos os níveis, não é apenas na ciência aplicada, mas tem que ser uma resposta àquilo que são as necessidades hoje do local e, portanto, aquilo que me parece é que, efetivamente, os politécnicos têm dado um salto muito grande, mas eu não gostava que os politécnicos ficassem ligados apenas àquilo que é o desenvolvimento local ou o desenvolvimento regional. É uma vertente fundamental, porque para, para, para o desenvolvimento global nós precisamos do desenvolvimento regional. A nível até do interior, nós temos projetos que são projetos muito importantes e que, efetivamente, os politécnicos se têm afirmado nas diferentes geografias como promotores do desenvolvimento local e do desenvolvimento daquelas, daquela população. Não apenas na qualificação, a qualificação é muito importante, mas o desenvolvimento da região ao nível daquilo que é a ciência e da ciência fundamental também em algumas áreas tem sido, uh, tem sido muito importante. Uhum. Uh, tem toda a razão. Uh, so maybe we can uh, ask uh, between the, the, the first and second round Uh, ask the audience if they have any comments or any questions that you would like to be discussed by the panel. Uh, probably someone has to, to bring you a, a microphone. If not, come here and I will give you mine. Yes, hello. Thank you very much for your contributions. I'm Teresa Pinto Correia and I'm co-commissioner of this event. And um, thank you for your very interesting points of view. I have one question which is partly ref referring to what David mentioned, which has to do with um, the linkage to policy and because policy is part of the funding or from policy can come part of the funding of research. That's how I see it. But it, it's the question of researchers being awarded for what they do in regard to policy. So if you want to have better linkages, that will make science more meaningful in terms of society, and that would maybe bring more funding to science. But this is one, one flow, and the other flow is the flow of normally how researchers are awarded for their work, which is the paper. And the question is whether you, David, or someone else in the, in the round table has suggestions to how we can change this system of how researchers are awarded, how, how it's recognized, this work. So if we want to have, um, f if it's possible that we have funding based more on impact than on publications and how this can be done. So, okay, uh, thank, thank you, Teresa, for, for your question. You are totally right. Uh, so how to, because the question goes, goes, uh, goes deeply, uh, so how, how shall we fund? Shall we fund based 
on the, the ideas put forward, uh, or shall we fund on the ideas, of course, but also on the, the impact and the results that previous ideas have had? Uh, that's certainly a good, a good, a good question. Uh, so let's let's continue, uh, and I use I would like to have your views on something that um, that preoccupies me, um, and I, I'll tell you right away. Uh, of course. The Portuguese system, um, uh, science system, increased very much. We had these last uh, 25 years, they were incredible years of constant growth uh, in quantity, in quality, in every indicator. So we can consider, for instance, a uh, number of PhDs or number of, uh, of, um, uh, of publications or whatever. So it, 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 it increases. It has been a joy during the, the, the economic crisis years, it has been a joy to see that the only indicators that were still uh, going up were the science-related indicators. This was done, uh, in my view, very much based on the, the, the founding idea of José Marian Gago, uh, on the built-up of the system based on um, informal, rather informal research units, um, and on, of course, on the, the people, on the scientists, that most of them were, uh, were within the higher education system, mainly at, at that time at universities, uh, that, but they, they devoted a lot of work and effort on research. And the funding uh, was made mainly by attributing uh, scholarships, uh, scholarships which was at the time an easy way to, to fund people to, to work on research and of course on projects. And so we grew. Now we have a system in Portugal with 312 research units. My question is, for instance, compared to, to Egypt, uh, is it too much? 312 research units, uh, apart from the other entities of the system, like the state laboratories or the collaborative uh, laboratories and so on. Uh, is it too much? Should we somehow focus, strategically focus our efforts into more concentrated units or not? or uh, still go on with this bottom-up bottom -up idea of uh, rather informal and sometimes not so well-structured uh, research groups. Um, because this, this is, my, my question is, what structure should a country which has already attained rather good, let's say, rather good levels of scientific performance. Uh, what should this country do in terms of the system? Where to focus? Uh, uh, I'm not speaking just of funding. The funding is what it is. Uh, we get as much as, as we can. So, but about the structure, the structure of it. How shall we function? So my question, and, and of course this also in compared with Egypt, you have another reality, uh, certainly, so your uh, insight on that may be very valuable for us. So what do you say? Yeah, actually, we believe that the, the uh, funding should cover the whole cycle of innovation. For sure, basic science is very important. And I am telling the story of lithium, uh, where they discover it, uh, it charge, it store energy in 60s, but uh, the application were in 90s. And all of this revolution in mobile and uh, portable devices was because of this discovery. And people, when you tell this story, look at you and uh, smile, mm -hmm. but they are not convinced. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, do we need to, to, to stay to wait 20 or 30 
years just to get the outputs. So now we have many ecosystems. One is one, uh, the Portugal one. We have we have learned from the minister. You are applying the one who is uh, came from uh, Germany and other European yeah. countries. It's very important to have an ecosystem. And as a funding agency, we need to design our program very carefully. For the basic science, is very important. Uh, the easiest way to to spend the money is giving a scholarship to PhD. But the most important thing is how to design a, a program that have a, a goals, that have a target, and then different programs in different si in different areas in applied science, in innovation, and how can we support and shorten the, the, the journey between applied science, innovation, and uh, startups, start starting a company or something yeah. based on the technology developed by our researchers. This is very important uh, uh, to consider this balance. The second uh, thing is uh, uh, we need to work uh, together. Uh, actually, um, the market, international market is very open. When we say that, okay, we, we need to fund the Egyptian or uh, scientist to, to have uh, something important and then fund uh, another group, innovation, to, to develop a product and then look at the market. This is a very closed system and wouldn't work in many uh, places. We, we need to apply an open innovation system, working together, uh, having startups everywhere working in the global market and cooperating together. This is very important to us to collaborate as a funding agency, have a ne having a network uh, to, to support our scientists, our young researchers and uh, the uh, people to, to start th something to uh, show how the science, the technology-based uh, uh, products, uh, the products of the uh, uh, scientists can uh, develop something useful for them. Actually, before coming here, we were uh, with the Professor Mahmoud Sar at the parliament. Uh, the question is <laughs> how, how to tell the taxpayer that all of this fund going to science and technology uh, is important to them, how it benefits them. And we, we were struggling together to tell them this is uh, totally not a very short term uh, story. We need to, to think about the future. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm agree with you, this is a very debatable mm -hmm. uh, point and we need to put more efforts. Maybe in, in, in the previous uh, uh, session, it was about communicating science. We need to communicate better with the society to tell them the importance of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, communicating is uh, is very important and interaction with society. In fact, we are using um, taxpayers' money uh, to apply in science. So we should be accountable and we should communicate uh, rightfully what what we do with that. Uh, let me ask one one very practical question. With your uh, young researchers. Uh, probably you are giving uh, some scholarships to young researchers. Uh, where do they fit afterwards? How do they fit into the system? Do they get permanent jobs? Do they, uh, wh where do they go? Do they go to the industry? They, they still remain in the, in the academy and in the research sector? Yes. Let me tell you the truth. The good ones going outside Egypt. So we have a brain drain. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and this is very important and we are working with the academy in a program called reintegration program that we're trying to attract them. The industry in, in, in the industrial countries have a very competitive yeah. incentives for them. Uh, we need to localize the technology in Egypt to give them the opportunity to, to work in Egypt. So, and this part is very risky. The, the private sector didn't, didn't do that, didn't put money in that. 
So uh, in this, we are working together with the Academy of Science in Egypt to, to put some incentives to attract people from uh, outside Egypt. But when, uh, when, when uh, researchers get a scholarship or internship uh, for master or for PhD, they give it, we, we give it for a, sh for, for a certain time, yeah. five years or three years. After that, most of them uh, working in industry or in the government, uh, very small, uh, because n now in Egypt, in the last two years, we, we started more than 15 universities. So some of them going to the un yeah. new universities, working on it, but this is very important to have uh, uh, a system to attract people, to localize the technology, to give the uh, uh, opportunities for them to work. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That that is uh, important. Uh, um, and we here in Portugal, of course, you are you are still having an expanding uh, higher education system. Of course, uh, we are not having that in Portugal, so we are more or less stable, more or less. Uh, uh, so this means that we consider that uh, the the. Um, the formation, the advanced formation that we give to people at the doctoral level should be a formation that is useful for them professionally at all levels. Academic, of course, but we don't need so many at the academy, uh, uh, but also in the society, in the industry, in the public administration and so on. So considering that a PhD uh, nowadays is an advanced degree that gives more skills to a professional that can be applied everywhere to the benefit of the society. So this is our, our strategic goal, is to, to devote these uh, this, um, this, um, this new skills, the, uh, these advanced skills, to uh, give them back to the society, to the benefit of, of society. It's not easy. Yes. yes, but you have another opportunity to expand your system. <laughs> you have a branch of uh, Nova University in Egypt now and they are able to receive funding from STDF in science and technology. Mm -hmm. And globalization of universities yeah. and education is also very important target because you have uh, stabilized system, good universities in the top ranked list. So uh, expansion of your uh, universities in other countries is maybe one of the opportunity to yeah. So that. certainly you consider that uh, going global would be uh, a, the, a strategic, a strategic yeah. option. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, David. What do you think? Could I just pick up on Teresa's question, which came up, which I think she uh, uh, was directing to me? Uh, I hope there are possibilities not only for science to be funded on open questions uh, that they want to pursue through curiosity, but also that we can better use the scientific sector to answer the questions that policymakers, which are perhaps they, the ones they have, which are perhaps more short term. So there are interesting examples, including from Finland, of mm -hmm. where the prime minister's office every year publishes a call and says, these are the topics the government needs urgent answers on. Uh, and I think that's a possible interesting new funding scheme which every country should, should look at. Uh, those are different sort of questions, and uh, I think science can also help policymakers ask different and better questions, and, and that's where curiosity-driven research will come from. But I think it's an interesting example, what they do in Finland, and one worth looking into. Uh, when I first talked to them about it a few years ago, one of their frustrations was that most of the people applying were not scientists and researchers. They were management mm -hmm. consultants getting very junior staff to do a bit of Googling. And they said, we think we can do better. So uh, if you go down that route, one of the challenges, how can you persuade researchers to apply for these different forms of funding uh, uh, and then also be useful in the short-term immediate questions that uh, policymakers uh, can have? In relation to your question, is 312 the right number? Um, I won't attempt of course, to answer that. Um, I mean, some things to think about. 
uh, one needs to find a balance between the top down and the bottom up because it's the bottom up where the, the new areas, the new fields, the new development will come from. So having some ability within the system for new ideas to be pursued is essential. Mm -hmm. But also, on the other hand, it's clear that I don't think there's any country in the world that can try and do everything. So you have to focus your attention on, on some areas. Another thing that occasionally worries me is that, so when I talk to scientists in my organization, is the thing that really excites them is going deeper within their narrow field. And of course, that's really interesting because that's, mm -hmm. that's genuine new knowledge. So the more, if you end up with too fragmented a system, and as I'm saying, I've no idea whether 312 is fragmented or not, then it becomes harder for scientists to do the interdisciplinary stuff. So within my own organization, we're having a big reprioritization exercise at the moment. And uh, I think the general focus is we've gone a bit too bottom up and we need to have a bit more of a focus. So we're probably going to move from something like 400 projects to 100 projects. So we will be bringing things together. And that was with the explicit intention of becoming more multidisciplinary mm -hmm. as well, obliging us to work more closely together across disciplines. For simple reasons like administrative overheads, but also more fundamental reasons, because that is where we may generate more policy impact by working together. Yeah. Uh, and it's not instinctive of scientists to want to do that. They would much rather dive deeper with the people in their field. So you probably have to nudge the system to have the incentives to encourage them to work with yeah. people who are not quite like them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are right. Uh, and it, it is a difficult thing to, to, to do, of course. And maybe one should have a step-by-step -step approach to, to that. Uh, so not uh, trying to change everything at once, but going smoothly uh, and experimenting things. And evaluating the, 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 the system also. I think also the, that, that is important. Shuan, what do you say? Well, of course, striking a balance between bottom-up and top-down is difficult, but that's what has to be done. But I don't think the situation is uh, as bad as you are describing, because in fact, there has been already a great effort to build critical mass. The associated laboratories are such an effort. 100 research units are now, they now gather in only 40 associated laboratories. So the effort to build critical mass was a top-down and also bottom-up, uh, it was an, an initiative, an, a new uh, 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 sort of organization, um, uh, which then the community uh, uh, found interesting. The thing is, if you want to uh, motivate people to uh, build critical mass, then you have to have a carrot. And we have recently expanded the associated laboratory system from 26 to 40 in less than in one year. Uh, without any significant addition of money. Uh, so I, I think uh, uh, an important measure of policy to build critical mass is to get these carrots on. Uh, uh, so we're not quite as bad. 100 research units are inside only 40 associated laboratories. And it's possible that we devise other uh, uh, intelligent, smart ways of convincing the other 200 to engage in some kind of networking. I mean, uh, networks, we should support networks in the country. Sure. We're not Le so let me ask you, if I, I'm not sure if I'm understanding you correctly. Yeah. You are uh, uh, thinking that the 100 research units that built up the 40 associate laboratories should just be lab uh, associate laboratories, that no longer be research units. No, uh, because we, now, now they are both. And the, the, the researchers, they are in both places. The same person is in a research unit and is in a, in a associate yes. lab, and maybe also in a collab. Yes, yes. For, in, in, for certain associated laboratories like mine, uh, the research units and associated laboratory are one thing, a single thing. In other cases, we have consortia 
uh, uh, where research units re retain some kind of uh, integrity and uh, they, they, they still have some kind of independence, but it is a very strong networking. Okay, so we don't need to have only a, a, a crystallized system in one form. So I, I don't think there is a problem, but what I see is when the research units are now gathering in uh, 40 associated laboratories, and if we finance this effort, we will have only 40 big efforts, and uh, um, uh, critical mass has been built. Now we need to do the same, perhaps, with, not with 200 more, but uh, with a number of others. So we, decrease, we can have other, decrease the system, in fact. We, we can have other mechanisms of networking, not necessarily just uh, uh, associated laboratories and research units. You know, there are lots of different schemes in Europe for networking. Maybe we could have something like that in Portugal as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Luis, what are your views also from your experience from the field of social sciences, which is a very valuable uh, insight in this discussion? Yes, uh, I think it's, it's quite difficult for me to, to answer your question uh, uh, to know whether 312 research units is too much or too less. I mean, it's difficult to, to, to respond in a, in a single way. And I believe that what has been said about the, the, the taking into account uh, both the, the need of have a, a, a bottom-up approach to science development, but also to have uh, a clear idea of the design of the system as a whole, I think that we need the, the convergence between the, these kind of two approaches. But for instance, very simple indicators we could take into account in order to, to assess if this is too much or too less. For instance, what is the level of concentration of uh, ERC grants recipients uh, uh, in uh, the Portuguese uh, science and technology system? Very how small, still. It's still very small. How many, how many research units are uh, uh, the, the affiliation of ERC grants uh, uh, recipients. What is the distribution of uh, Horizon Europe programs in these uh, research units? So you, you need, if you get to the conclusion that there is only a few of them that is able to uh, create the conditions for both uh, accommodating uh, uh, ERC grant projects and uh, Horizon Europe projects, of course the conclusion will be that maybe we have too much. And I would be, in a, I would agree with this idea that uh, uh, to have uh, uh, economies of scale uh, by putting together and establishing bridges between the different uh, uh, units of the system would be would would perhaps bring some advantage uh, to, mm -hmm. to the system on the whole. This, yeah. this, this will be my your my uh, your point is a, a very interesting one, and if you look at the the atlas of research units that that FCT has prepared recently and is published in our site. Uh, we will have it in paper, but still, uh, nowadays, it's still only digital. Maybe next month, we'll have already the, 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 the paper copy. Um, we have done in the first, we described in this Atlas of Research Units, we described, briefly described, every research unit, uh, separated by, by, um, by scientific area. Uh, but before that, we have an introductory chapter where we analyze, the, compile uh, the, 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 the national system and also make a synthesis of what are the research units in Portugal. And there is one graph that exactly what, what, what you said. W the graph is based on the, uh, the funding. So for all units, for all units, so, so there are all the dots for the, the 300 uh, 12 units, uh, uh, the percentage of um, uh, international funding they have and the percentage of FCT-based funding. So that measures uh, how, exactly what you said, how they are able to uh, attract international funding. And of course, a lot of them do not attract sufficient uh, international uh, funding. Yeah, but these analyses, I, I, I totally agree with you, these analyses are uh, u very useful analyses. But, but saying that, maybe we should not only just focus on these very, very, very hard uh, numbers, so percentage of international funding, number of ERCs, which is, are very small, or things like that. Maybe we should also consider other more 
softer uh, things. Uh, so strategic, uh, strategic think ahead, uh, thinking ahead. Um, so for instance, and I ask Angela, what is the strategic thinking of the polytechnic system, which is still in the process of uh, affirming itself in our, in our system? O, o, o ensino superior politécnico tem-se vindo a afirmar e, em termos estratégicos, mais uma vez, nós, os centros de investigação e os, os laboratórios e, e a forma como nós estamos organizadas permite-nos ter uma visão mais alargada. Eu também, não, também tenho algumas dúvidas sobre a dispersão das áreas e sobre a forma como nós nos temos vindo a afirmar. Nós, a nível nacional também a, a nível do, dos politécnicos. Em termos estratégicos, considero que era muito importante. Nós nem todos conseguimos, efetivamente, depois até pela própria dimensão e pelo número de investigadores que vem, temos vindo a associar, nem sempre conseguimos estar ligados a, a projetos cofinanciados e financiados internacionalmente. Mas temos vindo a fazer um, um, um trabalho grande nessa área e temos também nos nossos centros de investigação, temos vindo a ter projetos financiados e com um, um, um financiamento avultado e, e envolvendo uh, um número uh, significativo de, de, de investigadores. O foco é fundamental e eu vou, vou voltar àquilo que tinha dito há pouco, perceber nas nossas áreas fundamentais e nas nossas áreas em termos de desenvolvimento local, nós temos vindo a afirmarmos e, e, e a sermos promotores em termos de, de algumas áreas uh, atuais, ao nível da sustentabilidade, ao, ao nível da economia do mar, ao nível da, da economia azul, e, portanto, não só por essas áreas, mas também por essas áreas. Na área da saúde também temos vindo a desenvolver, uh, de, temos tido desenvolvimentos importantes, e penso que a estratégia será essa, será conseguirmos concentrarmos em áreas multidisciplinares, mas não uma dispersão muito grande. E aí penso que os politécnicos uh, temos vindo a fazer um trabalho, mas ainda temos mais trabalho a fazer, uh, e, e acho que essa é, esse vai ser o grande foco. Uhum. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Obrigada. Uh, obrigada. De facto, estão, têm a possibilidade, como estão a, a, ainda numa fase de, de crescimento orientado do sistema, podem de facto... Uh, uh, doesn't function? Yeah, ok. Uh, uh, ainda estão numa fase, numa fase de crescimento de, de orientado do sistema, portanto podem de facto pensar estrategicamente e focar-se nas competências que querem, uh, qualquer que seja a razão pela qual querem uh, focar-se. Uh, so the audience, any other questions before we close for the, the final uh, two minutes each uh, of the panel? Some suggestion? Question? Obrigado. Uh, boa tarde a todos. Eu sou uh, do doutoramento de Território, Risco e Políticas Públicas da Universidade de Coimbra. Uh, o meu background é bastante transversal e, uh, e eu achei interessante durante o, durante o debate que hum, se falou muito da palavra de design. E, uh, e, uh, e parece-me que está aqui, se calhar, uh, a essência, muitas vezes, dos problemas estruturais da, dos sistemas. Uh, eu sou formado com uma licenciatura em um bacharel, exatamente no Instituto Politécnico de Leiria, e durante a minha formação eu denotei que uh, o objetivo do, 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 do Instituto era, acima de tudo, responder às, às, às questões locais. Ora, isso deu-me uma formação na parte da comunicação e, de, e do design uh, muito interessante para efetivizar problemas que são da ordem do local. Mas isso não me dá a potencialidade que a arte tem uh, para depois entrar dentro do sistema uh, em geral e poder fazer o seu trabalho com a eficiência e a ideologia que tem tido um crescimento secular não é? ao longo da nossa história e no desenvolvimento da sociedade urbana que tem sido uh, fulcral e da qual, se calhar, estamos um bocadinho a dar passos atrás em vez de dar passos à frente. Portanto, temos o exemplo da Bauhaus, 
que é um exemplo muito efetivo do que é que foi o desenvolvimento do design thinking, do pensamento e do design dentro do pensamento. E eu penso que aqui haverá um problema de financiamento, não do design em si para o desenvolvimento de trabalho, portanto, não que não haja financiamento para o design estudar e desenvolver te, uh, uh, respostas uh, para se apresentar enquanto o seu campo disciplinar, mas talvez dentro das outras áreas uh, o, o financiamento de design uh, dentro dessas áreas. Ou seja, o que eu estou a tentar dizer é que, ou o que eu estou a tentar sugerir é que uh, haja mais financiamento para o desenho infraestrutural uh, dentro das outras áreas, uh, não, ob não obrigatoriamente dentro da área do design, porque essa é uma área técnica de trabalho uh, técnico. Não é? uhum. Uh, muito obrigada por, por esse comentário uh, e por chamar a atenção, de facto, a importância de algumas áreas para a construção do sistema, do sistema todo. Uh, bom, estamos quase na reta, na reta final. So we are approaching the, the final minutes of our panel and I would uh, uh, ask you, uh, each, each of you, to say in two minutes, uh, more or less, Uh, the message that you would like to leave regarding this, uh, this future view of uh, science, both regarding funding, um, uh, institutions, strategic goals, whatever. So please, uh, your two, um, two three uh, final minutes for your message. So again, shall you start? <laughs> I will put it in, in, in three or four points. First, we need to work together and uh, have a network consortium uh, of scientists from all over the world working in certain areas, exchanging their experience. Uh, second point, we need to communicate with our communities, with the, the citizen in the street, to tell them that the, the, the complete system of innovation, science, from basic science to The product is, is very important and uh, to convince them that, to convince the taxpayer that uh, have, having, having money for, or grants for uh, uh, science and technology is important for our countries. Uh, for young researchers, we need mm -hmm. to put too mu more, more money in uh, uh, capacity building in allowing them to put their ideas, to communicate with us with their ideas, uh, their uh, inventions. This is uh, very important as well. Uh, I think that's all what I can say. Yeah, thank you, thank you, David. So we keep the order, we are very conservative here. <laughs> I think the, the main message I can bring is that uh, scientists have nothing to fear and everything to gain from opening up the process of research funding but also science itself to both citizens and policy makers. My hope is that better science will be produced so maybe we'll have, maybe the issue with science is We have a lot of quantity, but do we have all the quality we need? So maybe we'll get better science. Maybe we'll get science that is more useful for politicians, but also for society to solve the problems at hand. But also, uh, we're living in difficult times politically where the trust of ordinary citizens in elites is looking a little bit shaky. And scientists shouldn't think that's not us. I, th I think for ordinary people, scientists, people in government, it's all that bunch of clever people and they want more money from the taxpayers. So I think scientists should pay attention to that and be sure that what they're doing has some popular legitimacy and trust. And trust can be lost like that takes years to gain. So pay attention to citizens, what they think about what you're doing. They'll surprise you and it'll pay off in the long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, good advice. Uh, Schwann? 
Well, I, I think in Portugal, the public in general has a good uh, opinion about scientists. And uh, the coronavirus thing has helped a little bit more to uh, grow in this uh, public opinion. Uh, I have no doubts if that if Portugal wants to remain competitive and be more competitive in the international arena, the government needs to fund better the research, increase the funding of research. I have no doubts. I agree that building up critical mass is important, but that also needs uh, st strategy and uh, funding for that. We cannot create big structures and then do not fund them. This is fake. We need to uh, overcome that. Um, and I think that, uh, and now I'm talking, uh, well, I've been talking, but now I'm, I'm just referring to the Council of Associated Laboratories, uh, which, as, as you mentioned, represents, uh, well, around 9,500 9, researchers or something like that. It's quite a big deal. And the 40 directors of these institutes together, hopefully, uh, um, physically, one of these days, um, and they can be, uh, they are an asset to the government. We can help, and we are actually supposed to help in devising uh, um, scientific policies and supporting the government in various ways. And I do hope that the governments uh, take hold of these and value it and use it, because in the past that hasn't happened. So we, uh, the council is open to uh, uh, assist the government in facing the challenges uh, of the near future and reaching this 3% of uh, GDP in, in, in research mm -hmm. until 2030. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you, Servis. Yeah. Uh, we did not talk too much about, about society goals, societal goals yeah. or societal challenges, and I believe it is important to, to, to bear in mind the need for research development to have these goals in mind. And, uh, and, uh, and, and the idea of uh, emission-oriented uh, research programs is uh, fundamental. They are very much uh, uh, present in the uh, uh, framework, framework uh, uh, programs of Horizon Europe. I believe they should be more present in the national uh, competitive uh, 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 programs uh, uh, in order to uh, stress the relevance of this mission-oriented and societal goals-oriented research. I think it's very important. And especially because this brings us to the notion, a different notion of impact. I would like to come to the, to the question that was raised uh, before, uh, in which I believe that learned societies as uh, national academies and the Lisbon, as the Lisbon Academy of Sciences have a place uh, and have a role to play, which is uh, um, uh, to try to have a, a wider engagement with and a reflection on the public understanding of science um, the science diffusion in the public sphere, mm -hmm. uh, the communication and the discussion of uh, science achievements, the building up of an intellectual and political commitment uh, fostering the development of open science, and this is the way how we can contribute to better programs and, uh, uh, and also better policies for science and explain how science can uh, be uh, a part of better mm -hmm. uh, public policies. Yeah. Thank you for, bring the, for bringing the open science issue here, which is really a, a, an, important, an important aspect of science, yes. It should be open, yeah. Uh, so, you vai ter a última palavra, Angela? Obrigada. Para nós, em termos de desenvolvimento da investigação, o financiamento é fundamental, mas há uma questão na mudança de política e na mudança de entender e de, de dar oportunidade à ciência, que é efetivamente uma mudança ao nível do, da outorga, do grau de doutor pelos politécnicos. Como sabem, não, nós, a não ser que seja por associação, não podemos outorgar o grau de doutor, mas temos muitos investigadores e temos já um know-how bastante elevado que podíamos ter ao nível do, dos politécnicos Uh, mais uh, investigadores uh, júniores 
uh, temos séniores também a trabalhar e aqui poderíamos dar um desenvolvimento maior. Portanto, ao nível da importância do financiamento e da importância de mudanças, efetivamente, do paradigma e do entendimento do que é o grau, a outorga do grau de doutor por estas instituições de ensino superior que fazem parte daquilo que é o ensino superior em Portugal. Muito obrigada, muito obrigada, Angela. Uh, so we uh, arrive at the final uh, uh, points from our panel. I thank you all of you so much for your contributions. We, this is, of course, a, 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 passionate, a, a, a passionate theme where we could discuss for many hours. There are many, many aspects that I, I would be eager to have your opinions on that, but of course we have to restrain to the, to the allocated time and we will, of course, I hope, continue in other, in other fora to discuss this, uh, these aspects, which are really central to the development of, uh, of society in general. Uh, in, in every aspect. Uh, so, so please, I urge you all to continue thinking uh, and, and discussing on these matters because they are really needed for our, for our sustainable development. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you.